Good afternoon, Senator Wong. Are you sure? Uh, I'm in the building. I'm in the circle. I, I, I appreciate the acknowledgement, Madam Chair, Great. Madam President. Uh, I rise in support, and I want to acknowledge the very good efforts of um, uh, the Senate Chair of the Public Health and also of the Children's Committee. Uh, both of these committees had integral input in this bill, and I also want to acknowledge there were components of this bill through many other committees, uh, some of which related to education. Um, uh, this is an important and comprehensive youth, mental health, and behavioral services bill. Um, I rise in support of this, and, and it is a big bill. It's a big and complex bill. Um, but I want to acknowledge Senator Anwar's efforts and outreach, as well as the leadership of the Senate Democrats to collaborate with Senate Republicans. Uh, we have said many times in regards to youth mental health and behavioral services, it has no party affiliation. It is not a Democrat. It is not a Republican. It is a community mental health priority. So I, I'm so happy to see that it is a collaborative effort and a bipartisan effort. That being said, I, I wanted to also acknowledge another big part of this bill that will be addressed and will be mentioned of, and I wanted to offer my perspective on it. This will have a significant fiscal note. It is going to be in the tune of 200 plus million in regards to the program. I know in the initial outlay of this area through the Office of Fiscal Analysis that uh, the American Rescue Plan uh, Act funds will be used and that uh, the second outlying, the next two to three years, uh, it, would be comp it would be comped in, in, in regards to our budget calculations. Um, and there will be people that will criticize this for its cost. And the cost is an important consideration. But to me, the cost is outweighed by the importance of mental health for our younger generations. Uh, COVID has created such an untenable burden on that community. Um, the masking dilemma, the challenge of having their lives turned upside down, that is beyond their control. Our children have suffered immeasurable challenges during this COVID pandemic. We have seen it in parents who shower their love with them but are hopeless in regards to what they can do to provide support for their children. This bill is a testament to parents who have spoken out and fought for their children's well-being and thoughts of how the pandemic has impacted their lives. This bill is a testament to their tenacity and to their voice in advocating for their children. I'm very grateful that this legislative body has heard those parents, those grandparents, those caregivers loud and clear. This bill reflects that. This bill reflects this circle's acknowledgement that those parents' voices rang true, rang persistent, and rang visionary. And when we talk about the budget impact of this bill, I've heard so many times from Senator Kelly that budgeting is about priorities. This is one where the priority and the well-being of our children as they grow into adulthood, that the trauma and the challenges of mental health are cared for just as we do on physical health. I'll leave by this as the ranking member on the insurance committee. We have looked at mental health parity. I think one thing that is, should be a focus of this as we move forward is truly look at mental health insurance parity to ensure that those individuals that have the plan that they pay for and look for protection of their loved ones provide parity to ensure that they get the necessary care possible. So I, I urge support of this bill. I do want to acknowledge that there is a significant fiscal cost, but I will leave again. Budgeting should be about priorities. Later on this afternoon, we will be discussing a labor agreement, which would be in the tune of over nearly $2 billion uh, for our hardworking employees. When you look at this fiscal note, when you look at the significant impact and the lasting impact 
it reminds me again why this bill urges our support because it's about budgeting and it's about priorities and it's about time we put our money to reflect the good and well-being of the constituents we represent. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Senator Wong.